house of God. Thank you for each and every one that's here this morning. We thank you that church is open. We have a place to come to to exalt and lift up and magnify the name of Christ. At this time, we will pause to listen to our Sunday school superintendent as she makes a presentation to us at this time. Because you have to have 80% 
or over to qualify for world quiz. And we have great quizzes um, who have participated in our local quiz, but this year we did not have any of our, our children. July 5th to the 8th is our virtual vacation by the school. All right? July 5th to the 8th, so the Monday following Independence Day is our virtual vacation by the school. We will be joined with the Canaan Church of the Nazarene. They have consented to be with us, to, experience, to have this experience with us because they are not able to have um, vacation by the school because of the bad COVID situation now in Trinidad and Tobago. So this vacation by the school is for children 3 to 12 years old. All members who have friends and family with kids in this age group, please spread the word. You can spread the word by taking a flyer and with that one flyer you can take a picture of the one flyer you receive and post it on your social media. Those of you who have Facebook account, okay, let's spread the word. It's something great that we are doing. So please do this for us. Then, July 12th to the 16th, with the exception of the Wednesday, is our Teens Week from 7.30 p.m. in the night. Yes, the kids, you know, all the kids like it later. So there should be no excuse for 7.30 joining our Teens VBS. And Teens, you are reminded, the last time I was here, I reminded you to start saving your quarters. I hope Noah, I hope Cheyenne, I hope you all have been saving your quarters because the time is coming close. And this would be for our Friday, our Friday night blast activity. So the final night of this BBS, we will have a blast in the Lord. So save your quarter coin as you look forward to that last day of Teens VBS. So everyone, tell, share, this is Miami Central Church of the Nazarene activity. It's not Sunday school activity. It is the Miami Central Church of the Nazarene activity and therefore we encourage everyone to play their part. Tell as many people, let them link and get the information right here at our church and begin to pray seriously about these events because it's not, it's not an entertainment. It's about enjoyment in Christ and getting people, getting the word of God out. Thank you. So the school books have been mailed out, but we need volunteers who will make time to have phone conference about these lessons with members who are not in person as yet. Okay? So if you would like to let me know that you don't mind calling Sister Alice, because she's in and discussing the, the Sunday school lesson with her because you would have yours. Please let me know about this so that we can have our members feeling connected, not just on Sundays but during the week also. Everyone is reminded those who do Zoom Sunday school, there will be no Zoom Sunday school evening session. We will be having church here on Father's Day as normal. But there will be no Zoom evening Sunday school session on Father's Day. But you have to do something. We encourage everyone to pray with one father on that day. One father, whether it's your husband, whether it's your son, whether it's your friend, where you have to call on the phone. But challenge yourself on Father's Day, even though you're cooking and doing all these things, make sure you call and pray directly. Or put away a little time to say, I need to pray with you. That's the person in the house. If they're not in the house, you call them on the phone. That is our challenge for our Sunday school on Father's Day while we are not reaching virtually. Then we proceed. The Monday following Father's Day, right until the Sunday, we encourage you to celebrate all men. So, we would like you to call as many males, as many males, 18 years and over, 
challenge yourself. When I, you, you should be able to say, Sister Lois, between that Monday to Sunday, I was able to call at least five males that I know is 18 years and over and encourage them in the Lord and say a little prayer for them. So get excited, church. Get excited. Even though they are not here, the word can still be going out. So remember, 18 years and over, that's the Monday following Father's Day. We can do it. Yes, we can. We have God who said, I can do all things to Christ who strengthened me. Okay. And glory to God. We always pray for the safety of our kids. And we did pray. We have Sister Shireen and we had um, Brother Wilson, our DS, coming in at the beginning of the school year and praying for our kids, Pastor Sam. We had a lot of prayer. And we want to thank God today that he has protected our children. We have graduates. We have Mikkel completing his Broward College. We have Sarah graduating from middle, middle school. We have Michelle graduating from middle school. We have kids being promoted to a higher grade. So we want to thank God for their success and we want to thank God for his protection of them during this, this COVID pandemic time. So many kids have committed suicide during this period. But thank God for the hope that he gives so many kids that they choose to obey and focus. So we give God a high note of praise and thanks for all the kids who have graduated, who have been promoted, who have been protected by his grace. Praise the Lord. And our final thing here, Sunday school in person. In person, Sunday school will resume on Sunday, 22nd of August. So we are resuming in person Sunday school on the 22nd of August, which will coordinate with also the day um, regular school reunion. So we are all set. We are all excited. May God bless us all. Praise the Lord. Pastor Connor talked about the God who sees 
everything we do he sees he sees all of our motives he sees when we're here to serve him we are to appreciate all that god is doing for us during these critical times and i'd like to share a passage of scripture that i shared with you last week because we are living in some desperate times but the man said i was glad when they said to me let us go to miami central our feet are standing within your gates O jerusalem jerusalem which is built as a city that is compacted together which the tribes go up, even the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed and a testimony for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. We can come in this place and we can give thanks to the name of the Lord because here it is. God ordered our footsteps in this place and He kept us, kept us during the week. So we can come here because this is his house. Wow. For there the thrones of judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May peace be between your walls and prosperity within your palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek, inquire for, and require your good. Oh, my Father, my Father, my Father, we bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We appreciate you. Because, Father God, there's none, there's no one like you. There's none to be compared to you. Amen. And we have no concept of what it cost you to have us come into this place each and every Sunday morning. But in God, as you allowed us this privilege to be here, we commit this moment to you, to your grace, to your care. Because dear God, you are the one who is high and exalted. You are the one who is high and holy. And dear God, we just ask you to permit us at this time, Lord my God, to exalt and magnify you. That even though dear God, we are unworthy, undeserving, yet dear God, we pray that you will accept the offerings of our lips and our hearts. So grateful because you've been so wonderful to us. We thank you for Sister Aiken to be here. You know the form of cancer that that that, that, that lady has is deadly. What is that to you? not a problem to you, Father. Because all of those deadly diseases, you slew them at the cross. And so, Lord, my God, we thank you for her being here because it's a testimony of how great and how awesome your mighty hand is, oh God. Oh, my, 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 my. And Father God, you're sustaining her and you're maintaining her because then God, she is precious to you. Because your son bled for her, his body was broken for her. And so Lord, she's a testimony of what was accomplished.
accomplished at Calvary. This is not an ordinary day. Because of all of us, at one time we were bound up in sin. And you rescued us, dead God, from a life of sin that we can come into this house to lift up and exalt and magnify your name. Oh my, I'm so excited about you. I am so beside myself about you because I know where you brought me from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! To stand in this holy place, oh God, to represent you, to give honor, glory, and praise to your name. Oh my. Oh my, 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 my. Keep going back. Dear God, we commit this moment to you. And as the Holy Spirit does every single time we show up,
worship you. Come, Holy Spirit. You are welcome here. You are so welcome here. Let's worship you today.
healed because of that faith, Father God. Give us the faith that we need this morning, Father God, to believe you in your promises that in whatever business we're in, Father God, whatever storm we're facing, Father God, whatever Jericho that's in front of us that's blocking us, whatever barriers we have before us, Father God, give us the faith the size of the mustard seed, Father God, that things will change, answers will come, problems will be solved, mountains will roll down, Father God, and the wall of Jericho's in our lives will be knocked down, Lord Jesus. Give us that faith, Father God. Help us, Jesus, as we go into this very difficult journey called life, Father God. We are all here this morning, but we're not climbing the same steps, Father God. All of our steps don't feel the same. Sometimes, some person this morning is calling, is going on the step of cancer, Lord Jesus. They're trusting you for their healing. Some person is going on that step because they're first in financial worries. Some person is searching for that child, Lord Jesus. Some person, Father God, is trusting you for that husband or that wife in this morning, Father God. Some person, Father God, is in a battle for their family in this morning, Father God. Lord Jesus, hear their prayers, Father God. Hear our prayers this morning, Father God. There are people, Father God, who are in a struggle for their children, Lord Jesus. Father God, children who are running away, children who are hooked on drugs, children who are involved in games, Lord Jesus. Some parents this morning don't even know where their children are. Father God, we're trusting you to answer prayers this morning, Father God. We're trusting you for miracles this morning, Father God. Because we know you are still in the business of performing miracles, Father God. You are the same God that was here yesterday. You are the same God that was here 10 years ago. You are the same God that was here a thousand years ago, Father God. There is nothing that's impossible with you, Lord Jesus. Someone this morning, Father God, need a breakthrough this morning. I don't know who, Father God. Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm asking and I'm pleading this morning. Give that person that breakthrough this morning, Father God. Lord Jesus, I plead your blood over each and every person represented here this morning. I plead your blood over each and every family represented here this morning. I plead your blood over all the children who are here this morning, Father God. Lord Jesus, I plead your blood over the families of my essential church of the Nazareth. Wherever they may be this morning, Father God. I plead your blood, Jesus, over the pastors of Miami Church of the Nazarene, Father God, this morning. Lord Jesus, visit our hospitals this morning, Father God. Visit our prisons this morning, Father God. While our others that are passing, do not pass them by, Father God. Jesus, visit our men and women of the military around the world. Father God, visit the city of Miami, Father God, in a special way, Father God. We will continue to pray, Father God, for the violence to stop. We will continue to pray, Father God, so our young men, Father God, will stand up as men, Father God. That they will live, Father God, and walk in your purpose, Father God. Cover our children this summer, Lord Jesus. Cover our children, Father God, this morning, this summer, Father God. We pray for the leaders of this community, Lord Jesus. We pray for the leaders of this state, Father God. For you, the leaders of this nation, Father God. For you are still God of this city. You are still God of this state. You are still the God of this nation, Father God. We pray for the divisiveness in America this morning, Father God. We are praying for unity, Father God. We are praying for love this morning, Father God. We are praying for respect and understanding, Father God. Those who are heavy burdened, Father God, let no one who enter here carrying in a heavy load, Father God, leave the same way they came in, Father God. If not through a song, but through your word, let them receive something, Father God. Let them receive something, Father God. Someone needs to pick me up this morning, Lord Jesus. Father God, I pray for our men and women in the mission fields this morning, Father God. Cover them, Father God. The pandemic 
thing is not over, Lord Jesus. But you have brought us far, Father God. And we know, Lord Jesus, you didn't bring us this far to leave us, Father God. For in your word, you say you will never leave us, nor forsake us, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, this morning. Because you said, and all these give thanks, Father God. You didn't say all things would be great, Father God. But nonetheless, you said in all things, give thanks, Lord Jesus. Whether, whether we're going through good times, Father God, we will thank you. Whether we're going through hard times, Father God, we will thank you, Lord Jesus. Because you know, we know no matter what the situation is, Father God, you're in the midst of it, Father God. And when it's time to say stop, you will stop it. When it's time to say it is over, we'll make sure it's over, Father God. And you will push Jesus on a rock to stand, Father God, so we can testify of your grandeur.
ask God's blessing on this offering this morning. One of the reasons why we keep the doors open is because God is providing the means for us to do that. So at this time we honor him by giving him thanks for being so faithful to us. Father, you are the God who promised to supply all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so what we've been here more than a year. The lights are still on. The AC still works. And whatever other financial obligations in God that we need to meet, you provide the necessary resources for us to do that. So let me tell you I'm grateful, Almighty God, this morning to not give you thanks and give you praise for your graciousness, dear God, to us, your beloved people. Some churches can't stay open financially, but you're allowing us to do so for your purpose and for your glory. And we bless you, dear God. And we pray that they can, you will take these resources and you will bless it and use it for the advancement of your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So we turn to the book of Daniel chapter 6. And I'd like to take the time to welcome once again one and Caleb been with us today. Could you could you give him a round of applause? God bless you, man. I hope you understand that Caleb is a famous biblical name. And uh, Caleb was a mighty man. And the Bible said that 85 years old, that man went up and was victorious in now. Because he devoted his heart solely to the Lord. So somebody must have known what the Bible said when they gave you that name. God bless you, man. Let us stand as we read from the book of Daniel chapter 6. And we're going to continue. As you see, the title of the message today is No Prayer, No Power. And from verse 1 of chapter 6, it says, It pleased King Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps who would be, should be in charge throughout the kingdom. And over the three presidents, of whom Daniel was one, that these satraps might give account to them, and that the king should have no loss or damage. Then this Daniel was distinguished above the presidents and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and satraps sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no occasion of fall for he was faithful nor was there any error of fall found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and satraps came together to the king and said to him, King Darius live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the deputies and the satraps, the counselors and the governors have consulted and agreed that the king should establish a royal statute and make a firm decree that whoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days except you, O king, shall be cast into the lion's den. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it may not be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be altered. So King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house 
and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he got down upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave God thanks before his God as he had done previously. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that your word be spirit and life to those who are here. And that, Father God, when we leave this place, our lives will be different by what the words you will speak to us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. Several years ago, some ladies went to a zoo in China. And the sign was, don't get out of your car. And the cameras were on this car and you know how you know how us human beings are, we, we turn a deaf ear to words of caution. And so one lady got out of the car and he showed the line and he just pounced on that lady and that was it. When God is blessing you with success, there's people who would have envy you. And so, because Daniel had an extraordinary spirit, because the Holy Spirit of God was upon him, he was very successful in the land of his captivity. And he was so successful that you had a bunch of people who were envious of him, and they decided they were the railroad. Amen. Wow. We know what a bunch of hungry lions will do. Get that man up there in that lion's den and he's gone. We don't have to worry about the competition. But they didn't understand what it is to be a praying man. Amen. And so Daniel was faithful in praying three times a day. And so what happened when they thought they had set him up? Actually what happened is the joke turned on them. And they ended up in the lion's den. And the Bible said, even before they touched the bottom of the den, the lions, the hungry lions, pounced on them and crushed all their bones. Amen. And we as men have to be careful how we lead our families because when we lead our families the wrong way, they suffer the consequences of what we do. Amen. And when, when Kedarius saw the power of Daniel's prayer. The Bible said he went out in the following morning with hesitation because he thought that maybe Daniel might not be alive. But during the night, God sent an angel. Amen. And what the angel did was shut the lion's mouth. showed up the following day and he cried out to Daniel Daniel was alive you have to be prayed up Amen. to be in a den of hungry lions all night Amen. and survive and be able to walk out from a lion's den in the morning Amen. the power And when the king saw the power of prayer, he said, Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwelt in all the earth, May peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, enduring and steadfast forever. And his kingdom shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even to the end of the world. He is Savior and Deliverer, and he will work signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He who was delivered Daniel from the power of the lion's den. 
So the man who was slain to be eaten by lions is set to eat first. Amen. God came and rescued him, and so his enemies were crushed, but the man of prayer stood victorious and he prospered in spite of the envy that was targeted against him. Amen. May we, O oh God, as Christians, live such a life that President Biden can get on national TV and said, may all the people from all the different languages and ethnic groups in this country, may you fear and tremble before God. Amen. See, now we know when we're in a crisis, we don't, we don't fast and pray anymore. We just hire an attorney and take it to the Supreme Court. Does God get any glory in that? No, no. Tell it. Because we've just become so sophisticated enough that we can we can afford to spend time in prayer and fasting before God and let the glory of God show up and people fail and tremble before Him. Amen. Still the same God. Amen. Now we have all this drive-by shootings, we have people just showing up and just wiping people out. Well, Jesus said before he left, after he destroyed Satan and his minions and all the works of darkness, after he destroyed all of them, he gave authority to his church and told his church, Behold, I give you authority over demons and serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. In other words, we are not a bunch of harmless people that sit in a pew for two hours and go home. That's not why we, that's not why Jesus Christ came and saved us. Amen. 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 We have authority to call things that be not as though they. And when these dry shootings are taking place, people don't understand where it's coming from. When men get executed by cops, Rodney King and all of those, people don't understand where they're coming from. You can march what you want to. You can protest all the way. You can be as activist as you choose to be. And Satan will love it because you didn't see him, what he doing. And you didn't understand all this stuff is a satanic strategy to keep man focused on the wrong things. And that's why, that's why the church is here. The church is here so that God can demonstrate his glory in the world. That's why the church is here. Amen. The church is here just the same way as Darius told his subjects to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Just like Nebuchadnezzar had to bow down when he saw the power of God. Just like that. God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And now we're having all these drive-by shootings and all this stuff going on, and we have the authority to put it down. Amen. But you see what it says up there? No prayer, no power. Amen. Much prayer, much power. Stand up and say that. Stand up and say that. No prayer, no power. Mucho prayer, mucho power. <laughs> yes, brother, yes, 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 that's how it is, that's how it is. The pandemic got us all bent out of shape. 
Hmm? And afraid we can't come to church. We, 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 we might get it so from somebody if we come to church. Well, I wonder why my people are like that. Because when I went to the cross, you see all those blows I took on my back? You see how they jammed that, that crown of thorns in my head? You see how they did all that and they strung me or whatever? I endured all of that Amen. so that the powers of hell can be defeated and my people are free to exercise the authority that I have given them to them over demons and serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy that when my people show up any place Demons and devils scared and children, and they have to back up. Let's look at Acts chapter 1. What did he say? What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? Hmm? Actually, this church should be filled during the time of the pandemic. Because we need to understand our authority and understand our protection. You know what Paul called him? Christ our Passover. Amen. That means all that stuff because he took care of it at the cross. The pandemic has to pass over us. Amen. Because he said I give you authority and nothing, not, nada, nothing shall by any means. What does nothing mean? Nothing. Nothing. It means the pandemic as well to the thing. It means all the violence on the street. It means that to the thing. But the church is home. Because we are afraid to come out because maybe somebody might harm us too. Mercy, Lord. Lord have mercy. Actually, the city and the state and the nation should come to look at the church and see what we're doing and ask us to help them Amen. deal with the crisis that they have because all of the laws that they put in motion can't Stop sin from doing what he would. They can't stop the spirit of lawlessness Amen. from tearing up and causing destruction. They can't stop it. They can't stop racism because the Bible says the heart is deceitful and desperate and wicked. Who may know it? Huh? And when, when, when Cain slew his brother, and God called him to put the task for it. What did he say? Am I my brother's keeper? Lord, have mercy. You see what you see here today? Amen. With all this stuff going on with uh, uh, the fringe groups. Who you think is behind those fringe groups? Amen. I was reading an article during the week and said that this man would go to the, the Baptist church for years and he had to leave because of the racism that, that he encountered and then he just couldn't see Christ that way. All of this stuff. Yes. Satan has even penetrated our churches. Amen. Hmm? Yeah. When, when other ethnic groups show up in the church, even the congregation majority white, what they do? They stop leaving. But, but what did Jesus say? Jesus says that you have love one for another. How is the world going to know you, my disciples, that you have love one for another? Is it loving that when other ethnic groups come into your church, you just back out and go, go find someplace else where everybody else is like you? Mm. Mm? Satan's got us all divided. But it's not over doctrine. It's over ethnicity. 
I like Michael Moore like yours. Mercy, no. Lord. Too many of them coming out of church and they taking over. Mercy. Hmm? Did Jesus say that? No, he didn't say that. Hmm? Because I'm a, a worship, among a worship people that look like me and speak like me, does that mean that's unity? No, that's not unity. Amen. Unity is when people from all different nations come together. Why do they come together? Because what the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed the wicked and deceitful heart. And now we can love like Jesus loved. That's what it's all about. And so we can face the turmoil and the turbulence outside and not be afraid. We're not supposed to be afraid. Amen. We're supposed to. We're supposed to be in the midst of all of this. Amen. And when the church shows up in prayer and fasting, the community has to change. Can I confess to you a dream that I had when I first came to this church? There's a bunch of people who were marching down 95th Street and calling the Shriners. And they were doing their stuff. And when they, when they, when they went by the entrance to the church, I was the only one that was standing there. And they couldn't come in. See, there's a territorial stronghold in this location. And you got to know the Holy Spirit of God got to teach you how to deal with it. Amen. Let me read to you what it says in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. There's no such thing. There's no demon in hell that can overcome the church because all of their power was destroyed at the cross. What is the greater you that's in us than he that's in the world? Former account of Theophilus, I made a continuous report dealing with all the things which Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he ascended. After he, through the Holy Spirit, had instructed and commanded the apostles whom he had chosen, to them also he showed himself alive after his passion by many convincing demonstrations, appearing to them forty days and taking talking to them about the things of the kingdom of God. And while being in their company and eating with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, of which he had said, have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but many days from now you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they were assembled, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will reestablish the kingdom and restore it to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to become acquainted and know what time reigns of, of fixed years and seasons which the Father has appointed by his own choice and authority and personal power. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In other words, saints of God, spirit-controlled prayer. Well, why is it necessary for us to pray in the spirit? It's necessary to pray in the spirit because only the spirit of, of God alone understands how we must approach this world. The man in the gate called Jesus was here with, with, with people who were on their way to the temple to pray. 
Back in those days, they were just like that and they prayed three times a day. Nine o'clock, twelve o'clock, and three o'clock. We condemn Islam for all the stuff that they do, but they, they exceed us because they pray five times a day. Amen. If, you, if we pray one time, <laughs> we should pray once a day, some, some of us doing a whole lot. And so the issue in this country is the fact of a prayerless church. Tell it. Can't get people to come to church and pray. Can't get people to get on the phone and pray. We rather stay home and be intimidated by the devil. We rather stay home and be fearful of the things that God has given us authority over. Amen. The Bible says that we ought to pray at all times in the Spirit. We even got that mixed up. Hmm? You 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 uh, you have the spirit, brother. What we mean, I have the spirit. We mean you 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 pray in tongues. Mercy, Lord. I pray, and the Holy Spirit of God empowers my prayer. I don't have to. I don't have to speak in tongues to do that. Amen. How the Spirit empowers me. That's how I pray. And that's how when we come together, the Spirit of the Lord supposedly in control of it and empowers as to how to pray when we are facing difficult situations and circumstances, when Satan shows up in our city and is tearing us apart. When we when we come together. And we are one heart, one soul. The Spirit of God takes control. And we are empowered how to pray according to the will of God. Amen. See, God exercises control in this realm in different ways. One of the ways he does it is through his church. See, we understand when we see different troubles and distresses taking place, we understand its source. And we understand how to deal with the source of where it's coming from. Someday, we are going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And when he looks at the books, well, there's all kinds of troubles going on in your city. I didn't see your name here praying. There's all kinds of troubles going on in Washington. I didn't see your name here. Supreme Court making decision that against my will because my word says righteousness exalts a nation and sin is a reproach to any people. My word says blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The same way I use Daniel a praying man to impact a nation is the same way I wanted to raise my church up to impact this nation that we live in. It's getting so saints of God that the only thing we are going to have is prayer. There was a, a lady in Congress she said a lot of the things in the former prison were saying that were not true. And we ought not to accept the things that he's saying because they're not true. What did they do? They took her down from her post. Amen. See where truth is going now. 
people are no longer accepting truth. The only place that you'll be able to find truth anymore is in the church. Because the church is the pillar and the foundation of truth. Christians ought to be coming together and spending time in prayer. You love this nation? Well, we got to pray for it. Because that's our only hope. Somebody got to intercede on behalf of a nation that's slaughtering all the babies every day. Somebody got to intercede for that. Somebody got to intercede when people of the same sex are marrying one another and God said he made them male and female. Somebody, somebody got to stand up and intercede for this nation that's going the wrong way. See, when George Floyd was, George Floyd was executed, and people were marching all over the place. You know how they, you know how they were marching? They were marching like this. God was here. And they were marching this way. Because we don't want to involve you. Hmm? The crisis takes place in the nation and we turn our backs on God and we choose to find our own solution to the problem when we're supposed to come and bring it before the Lord. That's what we're supposed to do. But yet we turn away from him. And things keep deteriorating. And God is saying to his church today, you got to begin to exercise the authority that I have given to you. We're supposed to be having our president prayed up. Given wisdom, ask God to deal with his heart. K. Arsuras in the book of Esther, when Haman decided he wanted to exterminate all the Jews, and they cried to the Lord in fasting and prayer, God spoke to the heart of the king. What does the Bible says? The king's heart is like a channel of water and he turns it whatever, whichever way he wishes. See, political correctness is not the answer because when the church comes together in fasting and prayer, God deals with his heart. What happened? When the people were crying to the Lord in fasting and prayer, God spoke in the heart of the king. And he remembered that somebody, two of his guards were going to assassinate him, and somebody turned them in. Well, did, we, did we ever reward the person who did that? No, no. See, God spoke to the heart of the king and turned this situation around because Haman had it so that all the Jews were going to be slaughtered. But who ended up on the gallows? Not, not, not the Jewish people, but Haman did. Hmm? See, God has answers to every predicament, every crisis that we ever experience. God has an answer to it, and the church is supposed to know if, we, if we're praying in the Spirit, then we know how to pray according to the will of God, and the power and the glory and the majesty of God shows up, and after that, a lot of people look at it and say, you know what, it has to be that God they're talking about. Amen. Hmm? We're living beneath our authority. It's no reason why churches should be closed during the pandemic. We should be thriving during the pandemic. Amen. Hmm? We should be coming here and rejoicing. Giving God all the glory. Giving God all the praise. Having a marvelous time. Nobody sick. Nobody dying. And people have to come and say, well, what's the, what's the, what's the new 
Christian people, none of you are dying, none of you are testing positive for COVID-19. What it is you all doing? It said none of these things shall harm you. you're from. Amen. Satan loves division. He loves to work in division. Hmm? If you think your group is better than this other group, Mercy, Lord. he said that. Because you can't be unified. And Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Love one another the same way that you see me went to the cross and I endured all the agony and the anguish and the punishment and the abuse. Got my face beat into a pulp. I did that because I love you. Amen. Greater love has no man than this that a man laid down his life for his friend. And God is saying to us, we ought to love one another just the same way like how he did and he demonstrated it on the cross. Churches ought to come together. Christians ought to come together. We can't keep doing this what we're doing because as you see, the world is falling apart all around us Amen. and we have the authority to bring change. But you know what we know? We, we talk about, well, you know, the president in there, they voted him in, and we said, no, he, that's not the one who's supposed to be there. Well, 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 give him another year or so, he go, he'll be out of office. What do I mean? He was legally and lawfully voted into office. We're supposed to respect that. We're supposed to respect it. We're supposed to pray for him. We don't have to like his politics, but we're supposed to pray for him. He like Trump. <laughs> you pray for him. Well, I used to pray for him too. Amen. I didn't agree with him, but I used to have to pray for him. He says, pray for pray for those in authority over you. Amen. So the church have to rise up and fulfill its mandate. So what this country and what the world needs to see is not how smart we are, but what the world and this, the country, this, this country and the world needs to see, they need to see the glory of God manifesting itself among us. And so when they see the glory of God, they hunger and they thirst after Him. And many people are born into the kingdom because of the glory of God they saw. When we take issues to Supreme Court, they can't see the glory of God in that. Hmm? Remember we talked about the fact that what 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 the thing said? That that was on the wall. She lived on the wall and she said, When we saw the power of God that worked within you. It says our hearts melted in fear. When God's people come together and are one heart and one soul, when God's people come together and exercise the authority that has been given to us by Christ, because we have to learn how to rule and reign so that in the marriage supper of the Lamb, when we become his bride, when the marriage is consummated, we, we, we have to learn how to walk beside him and reflect his glory. Can't do that if you didn't overcome anything. Saints of God, we have our work ahead of us. Amen. 
If we spend the time in prayer like we spend on, on watching TV, hello. Hmm? See, the world's got us because we like we love to be entertained. You see, when we when we sit and watch all that stuff, they sell products. If we spend half the time that we do watching television, if we spend half that time in prayer, this nation will be different. Ask him. Ask him. He got the mouth. Ask him if you saw TV in my house. I don't watch TV. Amen. I don't want anything to disturb my relationship with Christ. Amen. When the Holy Spirit shows up and tells me to pray about somebody or something, then I need to be in prayer. Amen. When he wakes me up early in the morning to pray, I don't want to wake up and watch on television. I want to be up and I want to be in his presence. Can I tell you something, saints of God? When we learn how to commit ourselves to God, God will show up and God will tell you to do things that you didn't even think He would do. So. There's, 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 there's world leaders that when God has a problem with them, He can show up and tell you to pray over that person. Oh, I'm telling you, the most marvelous gathering on the face of the earth is the church. There's nothing like his bride. Hmm? But he wants his bride to grow. And he wants his bride to learn how to overcome things. Because when you look at Satan's demise, Revelation 20, verse 10, he's thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone. That's his end. Amen. When he has served his purpose, he will no longer exist. But he's here to help us to grow, to be all that God desires us to be. So his sanctifying grace can work in us so that we can be delivered from the power of sin and eventually be delivered from the presence of sin. Because one day we go into a place where no sin is. And what it says, there's a new heaven and a new earth where it dwells righteousness. All these trials and all these tests and all these attacks they have been orchestrated for a purpose for the church to rise up and become like his Lord and King. So, this is what the Lord in my heart to share with you this morning. That we have to get it together. We can't keep finding a lot of things to distract our attention from him. That's why the church in the book of Acts was so powerful because their focus was on Christ. That's what we ought to do. We can pay somebody to come here and pay a big money to tell us what is right in this Bible. And we feel good. We feel entertained for about a week or so, and then afterwards we go back to how we used to do things. But oh my, God is calling on His children to rise up and walk in the authority that's been given to us so that the world may know that we are His disciples when they see His power and glory and majesty and might and dominion working in us to the praise of his glory that us stand.
Father, once again, we thank you for this beautiful place that you have prepared for us to come once again. To be reminded about the price you pay and the expectations that you have of us. That Lord my God, that because of your Holy Spirit, we can fulfill them, dear God, to the praise of your glory. You said in the word that you have given to us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Nothing lacking. Oh God, if we didn't hear that we're supposed to wake us up tonight, wake us up early in the morning, dear God. So your word, dear God, will resonate down in the innermost depths of our being. Because, Lord, everyone in this century, as long as they are alive in Christ, all of us are destined for great and wonderful things. Because we are your beloved children. So, Lord God, we just pray now that you dismiss us. And then, God, you guide our paths during the entire week. And then, you dig up the, you know how you do sometimes, you interrupt our thoughts. Because you want to share some gem with us. I pray that you do so, so when we come back into this place on Father's Day, we have a different perspective on who you are and who we are in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I'm him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. According to his power that goes within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. And then